Let's head over to the Beko kitchen and meet Amber Rose, who is joining Mark today. Morning, Amber. Good morning. You have been described as uh, chef to the stars, and I'm just dying to know. No just give pressure. us a little, no pressure. <laughs> just a little taster. Who are just a couple of names you're allowed to name drop? Oh uh, well, I did cook for Gwyneth Paltrow while she was filming Mordecai with Johnny oh. Depp, so that was fun. And um, I cooked for Jude and Sadie uh, for years. Fantastic. Yeah. Now this is a gorgeous looking book, wild, delicious. We are cooking from that today too. What are we cooking? Uh, we are cooking some very delicious and nutritious um, activated buckwheat pancakes mm. with um, a chia jam and fresh yoghurt. Yum. And you've got the very best in book models too. Mark's doing a stellar job standing there holding he that. Is. <laughs> and we're back in the Beko kitchen along with Chef Mark is Amber Rose and we're making the buckwheat pancakes from your book Wild Delicious. We are. And it's wildly delicious even just looking at that book. It looks stunning. Dunning. Oh, thank you. What do we have to do though? Let's get Mark busy and then we can <laughs> chat more. Yes, Mark. Um, so what you want to do first of all is just soak your buckwheat mm -hmm. um, overnight, which just softens it and um, then when you add the other ingredients it just blends really beautifully into a um, smooth batter. What else is in there? So we have some uh, buckwheat. And I like to use the buckwheat groats because you can soak them overnight so you're making activated buckwheat pancakes as opposed to just the uh, flour. And then we have a cup of fresh water, one egg, um, a teaspoon of vanilla, and a couple of spoons of coconut sugar. Yum. It, it, uh, the ingredients here look so fresh and so beautiful, and that's so far what I've seen from your book, kind of what it's about. Where did you get this whole idea of, I guess, healthy food? It, to me, it seems very wholesome. Yeah. So I guess I was really brought up in a very um, wholesome way like my parents grew a lot of our own vegetables and we really ate seasonally and from the garden so I think it um, definitely was inspired by growing up in my mum's garden yeah and then I've just felt that as I have gone through life if I sort of sometimes veer off that path it's fine you know life is all about mm, balance but as course. long as I sort of come back to it then it sort of keeps me feeling good and Is that being reflected in some of the stars you've worked with? You know, you've mentioned Gwyneth Paltrow, I know David Schwimmer is in there as well. Are they the sort of people with very busy lives who relish that kind of food? Oh, definitely. Um, and I think that was one of the really lovely things about cooking for Gwyneth actually was really she just loved to eat the sort of things I love to make so it worked, that worked really mm. well. Um, and she was just so appreciative of just fresh, beautiful food so Excellent. Yeah. And I've got a question for you. Go on. He loved the bone marrow. Which celebrity? <laughs> well, Sadie was a vegetarian, so not her. Um, yeah, I have to say, I don't think I actually cooked it for them. That, that no, was one of my out. own personal <laughs> favourites. It is in the book, though, and it's it absolutely is. delicious bone marrow. Where are we up to, Mark? Right, so we're just making the uh, batter. I'm just making too much noise, probably. No, it's okay. Keep <laughs> going. That's why I've stopped. I've so we just keep blending it until it's, uh, until it's really smooth. Until it's really smooth. And then what, what's the sort of consistency or the, the thickness we're yeah, looking for? Yeah, it's like a sort of, um, like a pancake, a little bit thicker than a crepe batter. Okay, cool. So that's similar to a pie clip for people that might be yeah, cooking at home? Yeah, Great. I'm curious to know, working with some, <laughs> this is a great noise, working with some of those stars as well, what are they like, you know, when, when the cameras are off, the paparazzi or whoever are away and you're just there making them some food, what are they like? They're just like you and me, really, I promise. I was kind of hoping you'd say that they were a little bit sort of, ah, oh, she's a bit of a uh, up themselves, but no, I guess it, as you, they, they're real people, They're just real people. They're some of the loveliest people I've come across, and um, I think, you know, when you're really busy and you've got someone helping you out with the food side of things, it's um, really appreciated, so... Mm. Yeah, it was, right. it was a great Just experience. Just like you and me? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> what I love too about the book, Wild Delicious, and keep going, Mark. We'll, we'll just chat away. You just do your thing there so in the kitchen. Um, <laughs> yeah. um, what I love too is healthy and um, wholesome doesn't mean boring, bland. Or no, not no. at all. Not at all. What's it? Because there's a decent cross section of recipes in your book as well, ranging well. Well, give us some, some yeah, of the favourites. So, so I'm um, experienced food growing up yep. so when we um, were going to cook a, a meal for example a dinner we had to go out into the vegetable garden to see what veggies there were or if I wanted to do baking I love baking as a kid then I had to go into the orchard to see what fruit there was um, so I've really um, written the book how I experienced food growing up mm -hmm. um, and yeah I guess it's all about sort of connecting people through their food back to where it comes from you know 
food doesn't come from the supermarket, no. it comes from the garden or the sea so or the important. wild. Yeah. So important. Okay, we're going to let our little slave over here keep going <laughs> and get these going <laughs> and we'll come back and try these buckwheat pancakes very, very soon. Now Amber Rose is here and we've got some pancakes that we've got to put together, these buckwheat pancakes from Wild Delicious. Where are we up to? We have, I well. see, changed our method <laughs> of blending, Mark. Yes, no, it's all about adaption in the uh, kitchen. <laughs> and look at this batter now, look how smooth that is. We've Perfection. changed blenders. Oh, yum. And we're going to pour it into a jug, which is just going to make it easier to cook in the pan. That looks like you could eat it just like that, but I'm, I will it's actually refrain. really, really tasty. <laughs> Good. It's almost like a like a thick shake, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, so, great. Amber, you've obviously spent a lot of time overseas. We've talked about some of the amazing celebs and stars you've worked with, but you have come back home. How is I it? I have. Oh, look, I just love being here. It's, you know, and that's really what I was describing in the book, that process <coughs> of coming home and coming back to all the things that I had as a, ch you know, growing up. And um, all of those childhood experiences are really what has inspired my entire life's work really so to be able to come home is so special how do we stack up in the world with our seasonal produce and, and meat and stuff like that um i think it's we have incredible produce here yeah. yeah i think it's you know we're lucky that we can grow a lot of our own fruit and veg and we've got all our own amazing outdoor grass reared you know meats and uh, shellfish and fish and oh we're so lucky Awesome. So we've got the pancakes in the, They're very small. I would have done the whole pan, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah. But, you know, that's all right. One for each of us. How do we know w w when these are ready or when to flip? Because that's where I always struggle. Yeah, so basically these pancakes are like a cross between an American pancake or a pikelet, as we call them in New Zealand, yep. and a crepe. They're sort of somewhere in the middle. Nice. So they don't puff up a lot, but they will turn a little bit more opaque on the top and you'll get a few little bubbles. And there's nothing quite like cooking with butter. Is that it's smell such that a good just smell, isn't it? <laughs> gets oh. saliva going. It really does. The smell of, they're not quite ready yet, oh. but they'll get there. You've they'll been told, there. Mark. I, yeah, I know. You're not the boss of the kitchen today. <laughs> I know, I know. So how always... long has the process of putting Wild Delicious together taken? Because I'm assuming you don't just sit down and bang out a cookbook in a weekend. You definitely don't, no. no. I actually started um, the process of thinking about it and writing the proposal about three to four years ago. Um, because I knew that I wanted to move home mm. and I wanted to come home and write the book here and do the photographs here. So I started that process quite a long time before I actually came back so that when I got back I had something to sink my yeah. teeth into. Great. Are you nearly ready to flip, Mark? They're or nearly we... ready. They're nearly looking ready. good. You can, They're looking yeah, good. you can see that, can't you? Yeah, it's not quite so shiny anymore. No. Just around there, and we've you, got to feel yeah, those bubbles. No pressure, no pressure. And you pressure. can just lift the corner and have a sneaky peek. OK, we're going to do a, count, like, a countdown. Or I feel like we I'm need some sort of ceremony. <laughs> no? <laughs> no, 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 There's a high ceiling in here. Just get, go on, give it. Oh, oh, look at that. Golden brown. So they look beautiful. What's going with them? Because I can see some other lovely ingredients over there. So the gorgeous thing about these pancakes is you really can serve anything you like at any time of the year, whatever's in season. Um, but as we're coming into spring and summer and the strawberries are just around mm. the corner, I just, strawberries, I love strawberries. My kids love strawberries on pancakes. <laughs> so you could have yogurt or cream, whichever you prefer. Maple syrup. Maple syrup. Mm. You've got to have maple syrup with pancakes. Absolutely. Or beautiful New Zealand. And honey would be gorgeous as well. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, some bit of berry chia jam. So you made this? I did. What I goes did. Into something like that. So it is literally just fresh berries that you cook up with a little bit of water, a little bit of coconut sugar if they need it. Sometimes they don't, depending on how sweet they are. And then you just add in a tablespoon or two of chia seeds. Mm. And so it thickens the mix like a jam, but without. Um, you know, it takes five minutes. Yeah, oh, yeah. I love that. So and you, you need, less sugar, then, you need yeah. way less sugar, and it's got protein, which yeah. is really awesome. So you've got adding in your protein to your breakfast, which great. So once we flip, I'm assuming side two does. It's like a cassette. Side two doesn't need quite as much as side one. Exactly. Yeah, about half the time. Right. Yeah. Great. Excellent. We cannot wait to try these. When they I say we, I mean I oh, can't wait to try them at the end of the show. Well, you'd think after all this time, Mark would know a thing about two. <laughs> they are going to be delicious. Of course, the recipe is on our website, thecafe.co.nz, and it's in Amber's book, Wild Delicious too. Look at these. We've cooked them. We're just finishing. We've got a bit of yogurt there. We've got this beautiful homemade jam, some strawberries, and. Can't have pancakes without maple Oops. syrup. Oh, oh, yeah. 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 They're, they're a little bit too far away from yeah. my mouth at the moment. No, yeah. that's fine. <laughs> Anytime you're ready, like, look at that. Right, you bring that one bring over. over. <laughs> feel the, feel they the do look delicious. Hey, what's on the menu for tomorrow? Well, tomorrow I've got a real treat. We've got beef olives with curdle.